In this video, we are looking at proje projection enrollment and facility plan. Student so enrollment has serious implications for resource input, especially educational facilities. The projected enrollment, which is likely to be on the increase, would require additional classrooms, additional furniture, and other teaching learning facilities. Now, let's look at what uh, Agenta 1993 says. He said the size of these facilities depends upon the student enrollment. So before you can get facilities, you need benches, you need tables, you need whatever you need to uh, aid teaching and learning. You need to know the total number of students that are enrolled in their particular school or in a section or in a class. So there will always be a benchmark for student facility because the benchmark that may come up for the Ministry of Education will serve as a guide on what should be planned for. For example, if you're looking at the class size and you have a class size in the primary and secondary school between 35 to 40 pupils that will be in a particular class. So if you are to determine the total number of classrooms you're going to build, that will act as a guide. Now let's see some of these uh, examples. Let's assume you need to build a classroom, you need to build a laboratory, you need to get workshop. Definitely the total number of students that are enrolled in a particular class or enrolled in a particular school will determine the total number of classroom, laboratories or workshop that would be built. There is uh, a formula as presented by Agenta 1993. Now let's see what this formula says. Here this is a formula. You have Sn, the Sn there over Hs times S over Hr times So what does this represent? The first uh, symbol Sn represents the average number of students taking each period. Now we have again here average number of period per week per student. We have here the average number of period for each room. For each room is used per week. We have the average number of this, each room that is used per week. Now we have the number of students. So we, before you can just come up to say, okay, this is the number of classroom we're going to build. This is the number of workshop. This is the number of laboratories. You need to have to know the number of students that are taking the period, you need to know the number of period per week because the number of period per week will, need, will determine how it's going to be reshuffled. Then we need to know also the number of uh, the average number of period that each room is used per week. So how many, what is the average number that each room will be used? The number of uh, students. Then again, we need the number of classroom, laboratory, or workshops because that will now determine what you are going to get for the number of classroom or workshop. Now, how do you get this done? Number of classroom to be built based on enrollment projection, data required. What are the data you required? You require the projected PPU enrollment and you require the approved average class. The approved average class. So now, what would that give you? For instance, if projected PPU enrollment is 400,000 and the average class size is 1.4, 1, 1 ratio 40, that means one teacher to 40 pupils. How many classrooms will be required? So right here, you discover we have known the enrollment. At the same time, we have known the teacher pupil ratio. The teacher pupil ratio is one to 40. So for you to get the total number of classrooms that will be required, all you need to do is to project required number of classes 400 over 40. That will give you 10,000. It means for each classroom, no student should sit more than 40. All the pupils in that class must be 40, maximum of 40. It could be less, but it must not be more than this. So it means you need 10,000 classrooms. That is clear. Where there are existing classrooms, what do you do? You subtract the existing from the 10,000 to know how many will be required. Sometimes the existing ones might equally need renovation, so you have to build that into consideration. So use the same method to plan for the number of chairs and tables. So if you need number of chairs and you know in a class, oh, 40 pupils are going to sit in the class. So how many chairs will you require if you have S and Y number of students or enrollment like we have it here? So in this case, then you also consider because if you are considering chairs, you now have to consider are you going to use single chair, students sitting one to a chair or students sitting two on a chair. So if you are considering two other chairs, that will equally determine what you need to require and so on. 